Chapter 1. The Birth of Local Markets In ancient times, long before the invention of fancy shopping malls and online stores, people would gather in small areas called local markets to buy and sell goods. These markets play a crucial role in the early civilizations, as they were the center of trade and exchange. Imagine a bustling marketplace filled with colorful stalls and cheerful vendors. One could find all sorts of things there, from fresh fruits and vegetables to handmade crafts and clothing. The air was filled with the scent of spices and the sound of vendors shouting out their prices to attract customers. The birth of local markets can be traced back to the time when human beings settled in one place and started cultivating crops. They realized they had a surplus of goods that they could trade with others. So, they would bring their produce to these markets to exchange them for things they needed. For example, a farmer who grew a lot of wheat would bring it to the market to trade for pottery or tools made by skilled artisans. This way, both parties would benefit. The farmer would get the tools he needed, and the artisan would have food to eat. These markets also served as a meeting point for people to socialize and share news. It became a place where stories were told, friendships were made, and ideas were exchanged. People from different villages would come together, creating a vibrant atmosphere filled with laughter and conversations. Of course, not everything in the local markets was about bartering and trading. There were also small shops where people could buy goods with money. These shops were run by merchants who traveled long distances to bring exotic items from faraway lands. Imagine children wide-eyed with wonder as they gazed at the treasures displayed in these shops. From spices like cinnamon and ginger to shiny jewels and fabrics in vibrant colors, there was always something to catch their attention. In those times, local markets played a significant role not only in the economy, but also in the culture of a place. It was a place where traditions were passed down from generation to generation. Grandparents would teach their grandchildren about the value of products, the importance of fair trade, and the art of bargaining. As the sun would set, signaling the end of the market day, vendors would pack up their goods and head back to their villages. The market square would be left empty, but the memories made there would linger until the next gathering. Local markets were the heart and soul of early civilizations. They brought people together, allowing them to share their skills, stories, and resources. They provided a sense of community and a place to celebrate the uniqueness of each culture. So next time you visit a local market, take a moment to appreciate its roots, dating back to a time when people came together to trade, exchange, and connect. These humble beginnings have shaped the way we buy and sell, creating a bond that transcends time. Question, what were the first types of markets called? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 2, The Rise of Town Markets In the medieval era, the growth of towns and cities led to the rise of town markets. These bustling marketplaces played a vital role in the urbanization of communities. People from all around would gather in these markets to buy and sell goods. Every week, the market square would come alive with activity. Farmers would bring their fresh produce, such as juicy apples, ripe tomatoes, and colorful carrots, to sell. The air would be filled with delicious aromas as bakers displayed their freshly baked bread and pastries. As the morning sun rose higher in the sky, more and more people flocked to the market. Some carried baskets on their arms, while others pulled wagons filled to the brim with goods. The sound of horse hooves and wagon wheels echoed through the streets as the city woke up to the bustling market scene. The townspeople would congregate around the various stalls, examining the products and haggling prices. Bartering was a common practice, where people would negotiate and exchange goods without using money. For example, a baker might trade a loaf of bread for a bundle of freshly picked flowers or a piece of handcrafted jewelry. 
the market was not only a place for buying and selling, but also a gathering spot for the community. People would catch up with friends and neighbors, sharing stories and laughter. Children would run about, playing games like tag or hide and seek, while their parents shop for necessities. One of the most popular attractions in the market was the blacksmith's stall. The blacksmith was a skilled craftsman who forged iron into various tools and weapons. His fiery furnace would roar, casting a warm glow over the surrounding area. People would stop to watch as he skillfully shaped and molded the molten metal into useful items. Another interesting sight was the cloth merchant's stall. Colorful fabrics would be displayed, shimmering in the sunlight. Women would flock to the stall, examining the softness and patterns of the cloth. They would carefully choose the fabric for their next sewing project, whether it be a blouse, a dress, or even a cozy blanket. As the day wore on, merchants would yell to catch the attention of passers-by. Fresh fish, shouted the fishmonger, displaying his catch from the nearby river. Sturdy shoes for sale, called the cobbler, showcasing his handcrafted footwear. The market was a noisy and vibrant place, filled with the clamor of voices, the tinkling of coins, and the laughter of children. Towards the end of the day, the sky would turn a dusky shade of pink, signaling the market's closing time. Vendors would start packing up their stalls, carefully stacking their unsold goods into crates and baskets. People would slowly disperse, carrying their purchases and memories of a lively day at the town market. The rise of town markets not only provided a place for socializing and commerce, but also contributed to the growth and development of cities. These marketplaces became the heart and soul of urban life, representing the spirit and diversity of the community. They continue to thrive even today, connecting people and cultures through the simple act of buying and selling goods. Question, what type of markets became popular in towns? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 3, The Emergence of Department Stores Chapter 3, The Emergence of Department Stores Long Ago people used to shop in small, individual stores. They would go from one shop to another, trying to find everything they needed. It was not always easy to find what they wanted, and the shopping experience could be tiring and time-consuming. However, everything changed when department stores emerged. These big stores offered a variety of items all in one place. No longer did people need to go from shop to shop, they could find everything they needed under one roof. The emergence of department stores revolutionized the shopping experience. People were amazed by the wide range of products available. They could buy clothes, shoes, and accessories all in one store. They could find furniture, home appliances, and even toys for their children. It was like a one-stop shop for everything they could ever want. But why did department stores become so popular? One reason was consumerism. People became more interested in buying things for themselves and their families. They wanted to have the latest fashions and trends. Department stores provided them with the opportunity to do just that. Not only did department stores offer a variety of products, but they also created a luxurious shopping experience. The stores were beautifully decorated with grand chandeliers and elegant displays. It made people feel special as they walked through the doors. The staff was always ready to assist and provide exceptional customer service. In the department stores, people could find items that were considered luxurious. They could buy expensive perfumes, elegant jewelry, and designer clothing. It made them feel like they were part of the high society. And even if they couldn't afford these luxurious items, they could still admire them and dream of the day they could own something so beautiful. Children loved going to the department stores, too. They would be enchanted by the toy section, filled with colorful dolls, action figures, and board games. It was a magical place for them and they would beg their parents to take them there every chance they got. 
the emergence of department stores not only changed the way people shopped, but also had an impact on the towns and cities they were built in. These stores became landmarks, attracting people from far and wide. The streets near the department stores became busier as more and more people flocked to see what was inside. So, the emergence of department stores transformed the shopping experience. People no longer had to spend hours wandering from store to store. They could find everything they needed in one place. It was a paradise for those who loved variety and enjoyed the thrill of consumerism. The luxurious atmosphere provided a sense of grandeur, making people feel special. As department stores spread across the country, they became symbols of progress and modernity, forever changing the way people shopped. Question what kind of stores emerged during this era? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 4 the dawn of shopping centers. It was a bright sunny day in the small town of Hopeful. The townspeople were excitedly talking about the new shopping center that had just opened in their neighborhood. The shopping center was a one-stop shop for all their needs and had a wide range of amenities. The people of Hopeful had always loved the convenience of shopping in their town. They used to visit various stores scattered across the town to buy different things like groceries, clothes, and household items. But with the opening of the shopping center, all their shopping needs were now fulfilled under one roof. The shopping center had a big supermarket where everyone could buy fresh fruits, vegetables, and daily groceries. There were also clothing stores offering the latest fashion trends for men, women, and children. People no longer had to travel to big cities for trendy clothes. Apart from the supermarket and clothing stores, the shopping center had many other amenities. There was a toy store where kids could find their favorite games and playthings. They would run around in excitement, pointing at the toys they wanted. For book lovers, there was a bookstore where they could find all kinds of books, from adventure stories to mysteries. The bookstore had a cozy reading corner where people could sit and read their favorite books with a cup of coffee. One of the biggest attractions of the shopping center was the food court. It had various food stalls serving different cuisines like Chinese, Italian, and Mexican. People would gather at the food court to enjoy a delicious meal while chatting with their friends and family. The shopping center also had a cinema hall where people could watch the latest movies. Families would plan their weekend outings to the shopping center, enjoying a fun-filled day of shopping, eating, and watching movies together. As the days went by, the shopping center became the heart of the town. It brought a new wave of mall culture to Hopeville. People would spend hours browsing through the stores, trying on new clothes, and comparing prices before making a purchase. It became a popular meeting spot for the townspeople. They would often bump into their friends and neighbors while wandering around the shops. With all the shops and amenities available in one place, people found their lives becoming more convenient. They no longer had to spend hours traveling to different places to buy their essentials. The shopping center made their lives easier and more enjoyable. The small town of Hopewell was never the same again after the dawn of shopping centers. It became a buzzing hub of activity where everyone could find what they needed. The convenience and amenities offered by the shopping center created a new sense of excitement and happiness in the lives of the townspeople. And so, the chapter of the dawn of shopping centers left a lasting impression in the history of Hopewell. Question what marked the beginning of shopping centers? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 5 The Era of Mega Malls In the bustling city of Metropolis, a new era was dawning the era of Mega Malls. These massive shopping centers were popping up all over the place, and they were quickly becoming the go-to destination for entertainment and shopping. Imagine a place where you could find everything you needed, all under one gigantic roof. It was like a shopper's paradise. The mega malls were famous for their massive size. They were colossal buildings stretching as far as the eye could see. 
Inside, there were multiple levels filled with an incredible variety of stores, from high-end designer boutiques to affordable fashion chains. You could find anything your heart desired, whether it was the latest fashion trends, electronic gadgets, or even exotic foods from around the world. These malls were truly a shopper's dream come true. One of the biggest draws of these mega malls was the brand presence. All the famous brands had their own stores here, showcasing their latest products and enticing customers with exclusive deals. The mega malls had become the ultimate platform for brands to showcase their offerings, and consumers couldn't get enough of it. They were drawn to the malls like bees to honey, ready to splurge on their favorite brands. But it wasn't just about shopping in these mega malls. They had become a hub of entertainment as well. Many malls had added exciting attractions like indoor theme parks, movie theaters, and even skating rinks. Families would spend their entire weekends at these malls, enjoying the endless entertainment options they provided. Teenagers loved hanging out with their friends, exploring new stores, and catching the latest blockbuster movies in these mammoth malls. Consumer trends were also evolving with the rise of mega malls. People no longer wanted to visit small, cramped stores scattered across the city. They craved convenience, variety, and an experience that went beyond traditional shopping. Mega malls fulfilled all these demands and more. With their spacious walkways, vibrant ambience, and countless stores, they had become a one-stop solution for all your shopping and entertainment needs. As the trend continued to grow, new mega malls were being built on the outskirts of the city. People were more than willing to travel the extra distance just to experience the wonder of these grand shopping paradises. Local businesses also flourished in these malls, providing a unique touch to the shopping experience. It was truly a win-win situation for everyone involved. The era of mega malls have revolutionized the way people shopped and entertained themselves. These behemoths had become an integral part of city life, a vibrant symbol of progress and consumerism. Families, teenagers, and even elderly folks flocked to these malls, eager to immerse themselves in a world of endless possibilities. The era of small, quaint stores was slowly fading away, making way for the grandeur and convenience of mega malls. And the people couldn't have been happier. So, next time you find yourself in Metropolis, don't forget to visit one of these mega malls. Step into a world of spaciousness, explore an endless maze of stores, and delight in the abundant entertainment options. The era of mega malls is here to stay, and it's waiting to welcome you with open arms. Question, what revolutionized the shopping experience? Check the video description.